Let me guess. You're in an extreme state of confusion about the path of your relationship with someone. Your heart and mind seem to be panicking about this person. But they're not really against each other. It's more like your insides are feeling a little shaky with the thought that you may have just found your one true love. All I can tell you right now is the fact that you're feeling confused is a good thing. It's one of the indicators that you're carefully assessing your way to God's promise of marriage. You know, many will tell you that when you meet your chosen partner, you'll just know in an instant. You'll feel at home even if you don't know each other that well. Your heart feels safe and secure with this person, and ultimately, they have a godly character. While this can be true, it's possible to feel this way even with the wrong one. Not to burst your bubble or anything, but these things can be manipulated unconsciously. It can be caused by emotional vulnerability or deception from the enemy. Let's be honest, how many times did you enter a relationship because this is exactly what you felt with them? While these are very good signs, they can't fully guarantee that you're with the one you're destined to be with. Knowing instantly is not all it takes. Genuine love is slow and steady. It takes time to develop. What makes people think that anyone can figure out who the right one is in a snap? So even after these feelings, being confused is better than carelessly going with the flow. It means that your brain is doing its work, exercising your wisdom. Because if you have nothing to be concerned about, your heart is most likely onto something. But you know what they say, the heart is always after shiny, nice things. Proverbs 19.2 reminds us, Desire without knowledge is not good, and whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. The heart wants what it wants, but it's not always what's right for you. That's why your mind chimes in and creates a desire for clarification, which can only be achieved when you're confused and curious. With this, let me tell you three solid reasons as to why God's allowing confusion in your heart, even if you've already met the one. First, the Lord is testing your faith in order to drive you closer to Him. Was there ever a follower of God in the Bible that instantly knew what the right choice was? All who believed in Him sought His word. They cried. They screamed. They prayed day and night to alleviate their pain. They were all confused at one point. In Amos 5, 4-6, For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me that you may live. See, the responsibility of seeking the Lord is not paused just because He already sent you your destined partner. It's not your happy ending yet, nor your final destination. You're feeling confused because there's still wisdom and guidance God has yet to provide you. It's a sign that you need Him now more than ever. Because if God gave everyone the confidence to declare who the right person was, He knows that our faith would inevitably decrease you wouldn't seek Him anymore because you wouldn't need Him for anything. And what kind of life would there be to live when one didn't need a God to guide them? Is this how you want to live? The ultimate sign of knowing that you've met the One is when you connect with God more strongly. Confusion is what drives you closer because it entails seeking answers from Him. The description of God in Isaiah 26.3 states, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Our God is a God of peace. He'll supply your heart with the tranquility it so desperately begs for. But the key here, according to the scripture, is that God will only fulfill this when you have absolute trust in Him. That's right. He needs assurance from you that you're committed to a give-and-take relationship with Him before you can pour your heart out to your chosen partner. Now, confusion is a temporary element that brings out your ability to trust Him. This is temporary, my friend. It's normal to feel it, but it's not meant to last. Psalm 119, 165 further confirms, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. By conquering this emotion, you demonstrate your love for God's Word. Many people don't realize this particular emotional state is an opportunity allowed by God, not a punishment from Him. Viewing it as a sign that God is inactive and unresponsive will make your faith falter. 
and this is not God's intention at all. Do not let yourself be discouraged by this emotion. It's something that calls for a response that glorifies His name and strengthens your relationship with Him. Don't run away from confusion. Instead, wholeheartedly accept it and run towards God. Knowing that your relationship with Him is stable, He will surely bless the lifelong partnership you're set to partake in. One thing you should never forget is that God's loyalty is unmatched. The second reason is this. You're going through a big adjustment in your life's seasons. Daniel 2.21 reads, He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. God appoints kings in the same way He equips us for the right relationship. After all, your duties as partners involve leading each other and your family towards Christ. You know how God anointed leaders in the Bible such as David, Saul, Solomon, and many more? Well, he had criteria. These were kings crowned based on God's standards. And let me loop you in to what God looked for. In 1 Samuel 16.7, Do not consider how handsome or tall he is. I have not chosen him. I do not look at the things people look at. Man looks at how someone appears on the outside but I look at what is in the heart. God is looking at the content of your heart right now. I'll tell you what He sees. A confused heart with extraordinary determination to seek His wisdom. This is a scientific fact right here. Experts believe that confusion highlights your qualities because it serves as a motivation for you to continue persevering. Your mind is boggled 24-7 because of your future life partner, and in turn, your desire for understanding and solving this matter grows greatly. It gives you more room for growth psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. You're most likely to crave more wisdom and knowledge from God when your confusion cannot let your mind rest. And in this, the Lord will notice that your heart is going after His. Confusion fuels your hunger for God's response. This is what he wants to see in your heart before he gives you clarification on your relationship with this person. The bottom line here is that he's preparing you for a chapter of your life that will undeniably be tougher than before. This sacred commitment requires a better version of yourself, don't you think? You'll soon be responsible for the upbringing of your family while you're fulfilling your destinies as a believer. It involves double the work, but a hundredfold the blessings. And so God wants to confirm that you are independently up to His standard. Lastly, being in a state of confusion is a checkpoint that requires you to recall all the lessons you've learned before and prepare to apply them to the next chapter of your life with your soulmate. Now, you've met the life partner God wants you to be with. This isn't a simple shift in your life, all right? Meeting the one for the first time is a unique event that you can only experience once. Given this, you won't be 100% sure how to proceed with this kind of relationship. It'll be overwhelming in both good and bad ways. But guess what? Being confused is a promising factor for you to learn how to respond to this new and complex situation. It helps you to look back and recall all of God's efforts in guiding you through every trial, including all the lessons you've learned from them. Have you ever struggled to solve an issue? but then you realize that the solution was the same as in the previous situation. We were taught in school that as we move up the academic ladder, we start with learning the basic lessons so that we can apply them to more complex concepts. Similarly, when you're confused, God's asking you to take a moment and recollect the lessons you've learned from your past relationships. What worked? What didn't? What needs to be improved? By answering these, you can become more confident in handling your relationship with your partner. Let's face it, if you're not even puzzled when meeting your future spouse, would you even think of pouring more effort into entering this relationship? God can let you feel mystified when you meet the one in order for Him to connect you with more. Confirm the preparation He's done for you in this new season of your life and recollect His past teachings. The moment you let these sink in, you'll know that being confused is not a power play from God. It only shows the amount of care and thought He puts into your relationship with this person. 
Remember, we're talking about God's designated partner for you. Naturally, He wants to ensure that you're prepared. 2 Peter 1.10 emphasizes, Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about His calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. The right relationship will challenge you fully. Challenge entails confusion, which will drive you to be diligent. If you escape from it, you're not giving God the chance to enlighten you about the blessings of love in front of you. On the other hand, once you embrace it, you can take confidence in the fact that you're doing everything that you can to confirm His calling for your relationship. As long as you trust our God of peace, you can never be confused for too long. We all yearn to stumble upon this exceptional bond, but how can we discern when it's been divinely presented to us? How do we know if the Lord has truly chosen this one individual, this extraordinary bond for us? This bond is not about any typical connection, but rather the unique companionship God plans for us. It's about experiencing an unparalleled unity with another soul, possibly the one you're destined to walk down the aisle with someday. The question then arises, how can God communicate this to us? How can we recognize these divine signals often hidden in the ordinary? Before we proceed, let's clarify that these signals aren't always comfortable or effortless to identify. These heavenly signs are sometimes dressed in challenges, discomfort, and uncertainty. But remember, dear friends, these uneasy moments are meant to shape and prepare you for that extraordinary bond. They are God's way of presenting your divine partner, molding your spirits to merge in His beautifully planned way. Decoding these divine signals, understanding their depth and purpose, might feel like deciphering an intricate puzzle. While every experience is unique, there are certain shared elements that might guide us in understanding God's divine plan for love. Number one, enduring love through emotional storms. Throughout the scripture, love is depicted as a journey, a commitment, not just a fleeting emotion. One key word used to represent love in the New Testament is agape, signifying an informed decision, a conscious choice to love beyond the realm of fluctuating feelings. At the core of this powerful expression of love, we find the notion of sacrificial giving as reflected in John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Amplifying that love is not about receiving but surrendering for the sake of the other. Drawing from this divine teaching, one can see that when love is genuine, it doesn't come with a switch to flip on and off, subject to emotional turmoil or shifting circumstances. Authentic love is patient and consistent. It remains constant through the spectrum of life's experiences through times of joy and sorrow, peace and turbulence. A love that's unyielding, even in face of emotional trials, is a solid indication of true affection, a reflection of God's enduring love. Our lives are marked by peaks and valleys, and it is within this topography of the human experience that true love shows its resilient face. As in the serene spaces of happiness, Love should remain steadfast even when the emotional terrain becomes challenging. The individual who truly loves you will be there through thick and thin, demonstrating that their affection isn't conditional or dependent on passing sentiments. This is beautifully encapsulated in the wisdom of Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. The friend who loves consistently in every season of life illuminates the nature of true love this illuminating light is a sign from God, revealing the authenticity of love in your life. God presents these signs not just as mere indicators, but as confirmations of a profound love that mirrors His own. Remember, the person who truly loves you won't recede when emotional waves crash. Instead, they will stand with you, just as the Lord stands with us in our own storms. Their love is enduring and unchanging. This indeed is a divine signal that someone genuinely cherishes you. Recognize these signs, embrace them, and thank God for them. Number two, God often employs a distinct strategy to guide you towards the person destined for you. 
You may find yourself encountering a series of unsuccessful relationships, which could lead to self-doubt and fear about your future relationship status. It's a typical temptation to assume that perhaps you're fated to remain single. Yes, it's true that God has blessed certain individuals with the grace of a fulfilling single life. One evident sign of this calling is an absolute contentment with the state of singleness. An exemplar of this is Paul, who did not express dissatisfaction or grievances about his solitary existence. Rather, he reveled in it. Hence, his satisfaction with singleness indicated his divine calling towards it. If you're not experiencing a similar contentment, it might imply that God is gently nudging you towards the institution of marriage. However, let's keep in mind, the ultimate source of satisfaction is God Himself. Yet the scripture does not advocate denying the wholesome desires He's instilled within us, including the longing for companionship and marriage. It's a good desire, rooted in the core essence of biblical teachings. It's not uncommon to find yourself navigating through an unsettling phase filled with doubts about your future marital status. You may question, why does God make us undergo such distress? The truth is, your desire for a relationship may be an indication that God has a plan for you. Your unfulfilled relationships may not necessarily symbolize your destined singleness, but rather could be God's way of preserving you for the right person. God often uses periods of uncertainty to strengthen your faith, teaching us to trust His timing. Sometimes the reason previous relationships don't pan out is not because they couldn't, but because God has a better plan in store. A plan that includes a person who will complement you in ways you haven't imagined. Hence, your previous experiences are not indicative of failure, but are stepping stones leading you to the person God has intended for you at the perfect moment. When your heart yearns for companionship and yet previous relationships have not blossomed, it's probably God's unique way of demonstrating His plan. He is reserving you for the right person and the right moment. His signs are often subtle, embedded in our experiences and desires. So, keep faith in His plan, His timing, and most importantly, in His love for you. For when someone truly loves you, God ensures His signs guide you to them. Number 3. Genuine love reflects in one's readiness to forgive your missteps. God reveals His love through such individuals. Exploring the essence of love means delving into the nature of the divine, because God Himself is love, as declared in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. His infinite love unfolds before us in innumerable ways, but one of the most profound displays of His divine affection is His propensity for forgiveness. Reflect upon 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, which enlightens us, saying, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent His only Son into the world so that we might have life through Him. It lays out the blueprint of divine love. It's not just about the affection we receive, but it's about the grace and redemption God offers us. This was brought to life through the ultimate sacrifice of His Son, forging a path for forgiveness. In the same vein, an individual's genuine love for you can be discerned when they continue to love you, notwithstanding your transgressions against them. Their love stays unaltered, echoing the forgiving nature of God's love. They embody the divine principle of loving forgiveness as described in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. When we stumble, err, and falter. It is not the end of the world. Rather, it's an opportunity to experience the depth of love that person has for us, as they choose forgiveness over resentment, just as God forgives us for our sins. It is during these trying times that God shows His love through these individuals, demonstrating His omnipresence, forgiving, and displaying an unchanging love for us. Number 4. Picture this. Two individuals destined to be together, but their insecurities rise up like barriers, intensifying the other's fears. This isn't an accident. It's often part of God's design, nudging you towards a deeper faith and reliance on Him. Imagine a man terrified of rejection, hesitant to pursue the woman he's attracted to. Now envision a woman who's equally fearful, worried about being shunned if her true self is revealed. 
Their insecurities are on a collision course, threatening to ignite an inferno of doubts. Sounds familiar? Let's unfold this further. When the man finally musters the courage to approach, the woman, governed by her fears, appears aloof. She puts up an icy front to shield herself from the potential pain of revealing her true self. This response stokes the man's fears of rejection, amplifying his initial insecurity. They're stuck in a loop, their insecurities feeding off each other, creating an endless cycle of fear and mistrust. Now you might be asking, why would God steer you into such turbulent waters? Why not a calm sea where insecurities don't clash? The answer lies in our faith's core principle. This divine orchestration is not a form of punishment, but an invitation to grow closer to God. When the discomfort of your insecurities becomes unbearable, it's God's way of encouraging you to seek Him as your ultimate source of security. Remember, our God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. He's building a pathway to Him through the rawness of your insecurities. As Paul encouraged us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. The journey of love is a transformative one. Yes, you may encounter roadblocks, bumps, and unexpected detours like these clashing insecurities. However, these experiences aren't meant to deter or dishearten you. They're opportunities for growth, pushing you to turn to God to find solace and security in His love. This realization could be your first sign that you're with the person God has chosen for you. When you sense that your relationship is nudging you closer to God, this is a divine sign that you're with the right person. It's God's way of showing you that this person, though they may inflame your insecurities, is meant to lead you towards finding your strength and security in God. God uses the crucible of these insecurities to reshape and fortify your faith. Number five. Honesty, unquestionable. Unadulterated honesty is one of the most profound signs of love. A person who loves you knows they've made a mistake and they're aware that their confession may anger you, but they opt for transparency nonetheless, choosing to confront the issue head on rather than bury it in the sands of silence. This, my friend, is a testament of love, a divine sign that they genuinely care for you. In another scenario, Imagine they notice you on a path that's harmful to you, a trajectory that may lead to disappointment or pain. They realize that bringing this to your attention might upset you or even push you away. However, they choose to voice their concerns anyway because your well-being is paramount to them. They put their comfort aside to protect you from harm. This, again, is an undeniable sign of true love. The connection between honesty and love can be found in the teachings of the Bible. It's not always an easy road, often it's fraught with challenges, but it's a path we must tread for the sake of love. As we navigate the waters of dating and relationships, let's always remember these divine signs. Recognize the courage it takes for someone to be brutally honest, especially when they know it might upset you. Appreciate the strength in their character that makes them step out of their comfort zone to ensure your well-being. Cherish the love that underpins such actions, because in these actions, we see God's signs of true love. It's beautiful to consider that God is at work in our relationships, guiding us, showing us these signs of genuine love. So, as you continue on your journey of love, look out for these markers. They're not just signs of true love, they're blessings from above. Sometimes, God will allow you to experience doubt while you are on your way to having a loving partner and a wonderful marriage. Although he isn't responsible for causing the doubt, he will allow it to come. And the truth is, there is always a good reason behind everything he allows or doesn't allow in your life. There is always a good reason. You see, the Bible tells us that marriage is a good thing and a blessing to be desired. And because marriage has the power to change and affect your life either positively or negatively, God willingly takes us through diverse processes to get us both ready for our partners and His purposes for our lives. One of the processes may include you coming to that point where you struggle with doubt, especially when it seems the person He is giving you or the future He is revealing to you seems too good to be true. For instance, it might be true that we all wish for a perfect home and a perfect partner, but wishing for these things is not a sign that we believe we can have them. 
Hence, even when they are staring us in the face, and we want them, we may struggle to accept that they can be ours. It takes more than mere wishing to believe we can have them in order for us to truly have them. So, maybe you are struggling with doubt that God desires to bless you with a loving partner or a wonderful home right now because of past experiences or your own perceptions. In this video, permit me to share some possible reasons why God may be allowing you to go through this experience. First, God may be allowing doubt in your heart right now so that you will ask Him for help. A prayer of God to help for support is one of the simplest, yet most efficient kind of prayers there is. This kind of prayer doesn't have to be elaborate grammar or words. It just says, Lord, I am at a point where I don't know what to do with what is before me. I don't know what to believe or how to believe. This looks like something you would want me to have, but somehow I feel like it is too good to be true, or I may not have what it takes to have it. I admit my doubt. Please help me. Help me with the gift and support of solid faith. Admitting your doubt before God brings you to a place of true vulnerability where God will answer you by giving you an answer of faith. What is an answer of faith? It is when God allows you to believe Him when you can't seem to find any reason to believe Him by yourself. You see, like I said at the beginning of this video, God will never cause you to doubt Him. Rather, He could allow you to doubt Him. The difference is that the doubt is certainly our choice, and it reveals our hearts and where we are in our dealing with God at the time. Yet, the Bible does tell us that even faith is a gift given by God in different measures to all believers. That means that God may be using your doubt to reveal that you need a higher and more stable kind of faith for this type of situation than you've been used to. Therefore, this is called the answer of faith. God will allow you to come to this point of doubt where you admit it before Him so that you can trust Him for help. This way, when faith takes hold and brings you into a home with a blessed partner from God, you will not take the glory or think you got them yourself. Rather, you will admit that, by yourself, you would have missed the gift of this partner if not for the gift of faith God gave you. You see, God will allow you to struggle with doubt sometimes as a way of bringing you closer to Him and guiding you to become more dependent on Him. Remember the story of the father of the epileptic boy in Mark 9 who struggled with unbelief. He was the one who brought his son to the disciples and to Jesus, yet he said, Lord, if you can, please help my son. Just like I said earlier, the wish was that his son would recover, but the faith to receive that blessing was not there. Deep within him, he needed faith for the situation. He needed to be properly positioned to receive this miracle. Thank God for Jesus' patience. He looked at the man and helped him see this in Mark 9, 23 and 24. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Through Jesus, this man learned that it is not a question of if God can give you what you need in your life, but if you can believe and receive it. The Bible tells us it is already God's good pleasure to give you the earth. So, you can come to the Lord with your doubt today. He wants your doubt to bring you closer to Him, not further from Him, so that you can confess like this Father, Lord, help my unbelief, help my doubt. Secondly, another possible reason God could be allowing you to struggle with doubt is to place you in a position where you can exercise your faith and mature. You need to know that, just like I said earlier, God allowing your doubt may be His way of showing you where you are in your walk with Him. God knows us better than we know ourselves, and although we profess many things, He uses certain uncomfortable situations to reveal our immaturity, fear, and limitations to us. This is not because He wants to mock us or hurt us, but because He wants to develop us and help us see our limits so that we depend on Him to rise. 
He uses these also to teach us true faith and humility before Him. It's an immature faith when you need God to do exactly what you said, or you're not going to follow Him anymore. Sometimes, God won't give you the person you thought was the right one for you. And because you don't have a strong attraction to the one God is pointing to, you may feel they are the wrong one for you. But in time, you will learn that you were wrong. God will allow your doubt at the beginning to show you that you should not depend on your own strength or senses, but instead on Him. Through this difficult journey of doubt and confusion, God matures and reshapes how you express your faith. In time, you will learn that it is so much better for you to be with the person God points you to than that person you thought you wanted to be with. After that journey, you have more faith that God knows best. Remember how the Bible says in Proverbs 24.10, If you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? You need to realize that true faith can only be proven in the face of adversity and opposition. You cannot say you have a strong faith if you have never faced anything that challenged your convictions. And it is through these challenging moments that faith will either grow or diminish. Not only does Scripture say that faith is a gift from God, the Bible also connects hard work with possessing true faith. Just like the first possibility places you where you must declare your need for God's gift of faith to receive God's gift of a partner, this possibility places you in a position to grow in faith. How? Because when your faith is challenged and you receive God's gift to believe Him even more, you will be able to exercise your faith in the face of adversity in order to get the results God is making available for you. Remember that the Bible does mention that we have a responsibility to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2, 12 and 13 Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. This means that although God will give you grace and strength to trust Him for the gift He is giving you, you have your responsibility to put that faith to work against the doubt that may arise. This doesn't mean that you're earning your faith or producing your own faith. As if it were not a gift. No, God is putting you through a difficult journey that will require you to work hard and grow. And that is one of the means by which He blesses you with the gift of faith. Remember these words, my friend. You may never be able to dig for the treasured answers or value the blessing of a loving partner if you don't first have troubling questions. Doubt is meant to be used as a motivation to increase your faith and dependence on God. Use your doubts. Don't waste them. Take them to the Father and let Him teach you to depend on Him and overcome them. In our journey of love and companionship, it's crucial to seek divine guidance. A pivotal question you should pose is, what's God's message about this person in my life? This question is of utmost importance as we navigate the tumultuous waters of decisions and life choices. Often we might act hastily, leading to outcomes that don't align with God's grand design for us. So let me urge you to take a pause and sincerely ask God's counsel when faced with such a crucial decision. Now, you might wonder, have I consulted with God about my relationship? Have I sought His opinion on my partner? Divine communication is an ever-present, ongoing dialogue discussing every facet of your existence. However, you may sometimes feel disconnected from God's signals, not because He's silent, but because your attention might be misdirected. Remember, God, in His almighty wisdom, has countless means to converse with you. You may yearn for a spoken word or a clear signal, feeling distressed when they don't materialize. However, this lack of perceived communication doesn't indicate divine silence. Instead, it could suggest that God's reaching out in a different, perhaps more subtle way. God's love for you is unwavering and profound 
As a beloved child of God, your well-being is his utmost concern. His love for you is so strong that he even uses rebuke and chastisement as tools of instruction. This is clearly stated in Revelation 3, 19-20, where it reads, Those whom I dearly and tenderly love, I tell their faults and convict and convince and reprove and chasten. I discipline and instruct them. So be enthusiastic and in earnest with burning and zeal and repent, changing your mind and attitude. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Therefore, it's essential to hold on and not let go of your partner when you recognize God's signs. It may not always be as clear as you'd like, but rest assured that God is guiding you. You might not be able to hear his voice audibly, but he could be talking to you through your circumstances, your friends and family, or even your conscience. His messages could be hidden in the beauty of nature or in the challenges you face each day. When you truly lend an ear to his wisdom, much like Revelation 3.20 suggests, a divine banquet of understanding is shared. Inviting God into your heart, making space for him at your table, permits you to fully comprehend his plan for your union. At times, the winds of conflict may blow against your relationship, stirring storms of misunderstandings or differences. Despite the turmoil, remember that the Creator, with His omnipotent view, is fully aware of your tribulations. His gentle whisper might be prompting. Number 1. If you've been led to someone with immense potential, yet presently immersed in their sanctification's early challenging stages, divine guidance might be nudging you not to lose hope. But caution is key here for we mustn't let our desires cloud our perception. As believers, we acknowledge the Bible's guidance for nurturing healthy, God-honoring relationships. Yet, aligning to these mandates requires maturity. Sanctification is a transformative journey. God gradually matures His followers through His grace, leading us toward the path of righteousness. It's often fought with trials and tribulations, particularly in its early phase. Embracing Christ in the new life He bestows, one must sever ties with their old self and their sin nature. This is a monumental struggle, for as stated in Romans 7.20, Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Even though we're new creations, the residue of our sin nature remains with us. Consider Colossians 3.1 Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, which encourages those reborn in Christ to seek heavenly pursuits. However, in verse 5, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. The same chapter reminds us of a responsibility to eliminate sinful inclinations still harbored within. The subsequent verses urge us to embody virtues granted by God through Christ, advocating for kindness, humility, patience, and above all, love, the cornerstone that harmonizes everything beautifully. In this sanctification journey, remember, growth is a process, not an event. It's gradual, filled with trials, triumphs and tribulations. Recognizing the difference between someone stuck in sinful habits without signs of repentance and growth and someone going through the early chaotic stages of sanctification is crucial. Therefore, if you see potential in an individual undergoing the tumultuous early stages of sanctification, it may be a sign from God to remain hopeful. Yet exercise discernment. If there is a persistent pattern of sinful behavior with little evidence of repentance or progress, that might not be a relationship to hold on to. Invoking divine wisdom is crucial in this situation. Trust in God's promises to guide you. He will shed light on whether it's a case of someone struggling through the sanctification process or simply living in unrepentant sin. Stand firm in faith, allowing God's wisdom to steer you right while fostering love and patience throughout this journey. Number 2. 
perhaps there are times when the allure of freedom calls out to you. The promise of solitude appears comforting, and the prospect of exploring potential connections elsewhere seems enticing. You find yourself caught in a complex web of emotions, yearning for a release, but struggling to find a sound reason or a gentle way to initiate the separation. It's as if an invisible force is holding you back, compelling you to reconsider, to hold on, to endure. Do these moments of confusion and indecision seem familiar? It's possible that this is not just a random tug of war of feelings. This could be God speaking to your heart, urging you not to surrender, not to let go of this person just yet. When you find it challenging to put an end to a relationship, despite your deep-seated desire to break free, it may be a divine sign. It may seem as though God is withholding the go-ahead for you to execute your exit plan. You might find yourself questioning, why do I still feel tethered to this person? Why can't I sever this bond? This invisible force, this lingering connection that makes you pause, could be God's way of telling you that He's not granted you the green light to end things. There's a reason why God might be sending you these signals, compelling you to remain patient, to hold on to love, the shared memories, the companionship, and the mutual affection. And perhaps you've tried to let go, to experience solitude, only to find peace elusive. Not because you're undeserving of happiness, but because God has a grander, more splendid plan for you. A plan beyond your current understanding or foresight. This divine intervention is profound because it serves as an emblem of God's desire for you to persevere, to hold on to this person. It's not a mere coincidence that you can't find an easy way out. It's a signal from God urging you to remain patient, to persist through the challenges, because He has a plan for the both of you. This is God's way of telling you, hold on, don't let go of that person when you notice these signs. Number three, when the person in question who might have wronged you displays not just remorse, but a genuine and sustained repentance. In every relationship, there are moments of pain and strife, some wounds so deep that it seems impossible for trust to bloom again. Yet there are also instances when a hurtful action, albeit not cataclysmic, still results in an irrevocable change in our emotions towards the other person. Now, as followers of Christ, our ethos guides us to always forgive. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 Be it in a romantic liaison, a friendship, or a bond with a family member, forgiveness is our Christian duty. However, it's crucial to remember that in the realm of dating, Forgiveness doesn't necessitate an everlasting bond. You're not obligated to continue a romantic relationship despite forgiving the person who's wronged you. It might sometimes be necessary to put up boundaries or end a relationship, even while bestowing forgiveness. Yet the divine tapestry of love and life is complex and unpredictable. Sometimes a person might inflict deep pain but the Almighty could bestow upon you the grace to forgive and reconcile. Now, this reconciliation isn't merely superficial forgiveness. It's about restoring the relationship to its original state before the hurtful event occurred. And remember, such reconciliation should only be considered if there's a genuine willingness on both sides to reunite and if there's authentic repentance. This authentic repentance isn't a hollow, fleeting apology not just a regretful text message, followed by an attempt to brush the issue under the carpet. No, genuine repentance manifests as a sincere plea for forgiveness and is accompanied by tangible, consistent efforts towards amending past mistakes. So, if you find yourself in the position where you deeply care for someone who has hurt you and you perceive God granting you the grace to reconcile, coupled with the person showing you signs of sincere repentance, then it could be a divine hint that you shouldn't lose hope in the relationship. God might indeed be urging you to hold on and not let go. Embrace His wisdom, listen to His whispers, and let His divine guidance illuminate your path. 
Remember, relationships can be complex, and love is a beautiful challenge. But above all, it's our faith in God and His divine signs that can help us navigate these intricate paths. The difference between the moment of your singleness and the amazing relationship with that man or woman God will give you is the process between now and then. What do I mean? I mean whether you were about to meet this person or you are already with them, but you have yet to confirm where the relationship is going regarding marriage. It will take both time and a series of events, some of which may not be pleasant for you, before you come into that sweet experience you've always prayed for. Remember that the Bible says in Proverbs 4, 18, that the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. The day begins with the sun rising, then the sun travels through the sky, and the day ends when the sun sets and darkness takes over. Similarly, from the beginning of your relationship until it becomes clear that this is the person God has ordained to be your spouse, God may allow you to go through a process both individually and together. This process will help perfect God's plan for you two and also strengthen your convictions about each other. Here are some unpleasant things that may happen when you meet the one God wants you to marry. Number one. When you meet the one God wants you to marry, one of the unpleasant things that may happen is that you will need a lot of patience. No true relationship ever lasts without patience. A lack of patience may cause you to miss the right person even if God brings them into your life. You may have some genuine questions like, well, I like this person, and they're also strong in faith and love God, but I am not sure if this is the person for me or not. I don't just want to be led by my feelings. I don't want to be where God doesn't want me to be. What should I do? It's very important to be honest about how you feel, especially with yourself, and I believe that is why God is allowing this message to come to you today. However, it's important to know that not everyone who ends up married to the right person knew they were with the right person right away. Not everyone who ended up in a wonderful marriage saw the best in their partners when they met. On the contrary, some were subjected to the worst behaviors of their partners at the start. But over time, their impressions changed, and God confirmed that they were meant to be. The truth is that when you meet the one God wants you to be with, you will need patience and a lot of it. God may not show you everything you need to know at once, but be patient. Don't commit immediately and don't be in a hurry. As unpleasant as it may feel, especially when you are afraid that you may fall in love with this person, learn to pray and wait for the Lord to reveal His will for you too. Remember that the Bible tells us that one of the qualities of love is patience. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It is not proud. Be patient and trust God's timing. Number two. When you meet the one God wants you to marry, one of the unpleasant things that may happen is that you will have doubts at first and need clarity. Have you ever listened to veteran athletes share their life stories? One of the things you may hear is that when they set out to pursue their dream of becoming an athlete, there were times when they struggled with doubt. These feelings often came when they experienced difficulties and setbacks or when they observed the road ahead in comparison to where they were then. Some survived this and went on to become successful, but many did not. Some gave up and chose a different career path that left them average at best compared to where they would have been if they saw their dreams through. Also, even as Christians, you don't wake up every day feeling like a Christian. There may be times when you look at yourself and ask, did I act like a Christian back then? Did I do the right thing? Am I supposed to be here doing this as a child of God? These questions prove, one, that you are a child of God, and two, that you are conscious of your faith and about pleasing God. 
Similarly, when God brings you into a relationship, it's quite normal and healthy, though unpleasant, to have doubts and genuinely need clarity about God's will for your relationship. While unpleasant, having doubts about someone is very normal. It's healthy at times because it shows you're not blindly following your feelings. It shows that you want to be convinced about your relationship beyond just feelings. It's normal and even quite wise when, although you like someone, you feel there is still something about them that you need clarity on. And that is not something they can answer by themselves. Only God can. You shouldn't meet someone whom you barely know and then jump into marriage because you believe that they're God's will for you. That could cost you a lot. You know, oftentimes we wish that once we meet the right person, everything would just click and we could get married. But it doesn't always work like that. This is why, like I pointed out in the previous point, you need to let patience run its course until God confirms your relationship. The problem with doubt comes when you allow it to get the best of you. When you let doubt lead, even if God speaks, your doubts won't let you hear. This is unhealthy. Hence, you must be careful that, even when you are not sure if this person is from God, you are not in a hurry to act. Instead, talk to the Lord about it. Don't commit so easily. Take your time and watch while listening to the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 19 too, Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? It may be an uncomfortable process during your journey, but in the end, it will be worth it, knowing that your relationship was not built on mere feelings, but on faith. Number three, when you meet the one God wants you to marry, one of the unpleasant things that may happen is that both of you will have to work for it. Movies and the art industry have always painted romantic relationships to involve the arrival of the right one and then a cheerful ride into the sunset, into happily ever after. Many people buy into this idea and adopt it as their own marriage expectations. Why? Because it is easy. You only need to be present and the other person will do all the work. However, this is not how real life works. You see, when you meet the one God wants you to marry, both you and the person will be required to put in the work in order for the relationship to work. One person should not be the only one to do all the calling, texting, or spending. One person shouldn't be the only one showing affection or apologizing. No, everyone must put in the work or else it won't work. Furthermore, as you two make progress together, because you're humans, you may step on each other's toes. You may sin against each other or even sin against God together. So as a way of making the relationship work, you will both need to confess your sins to each other, apologizing when you're wrong or when a wrong is pointed out and seeking forgiveness from each other. You will also both need to confess before God when the two of you sin against him together. This work includes communicating constantly, praying together, working through changes and making healthy compromises here and there. The more the team works together, the more you will become established in your union before God as the couple he wants you to be. Amos 3.3 makes it clear why working together, no matter how unpleasant it might seem, is very important. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Number four, when you meet the one God wants you to marry, one of the unpleasant things that may happen is that you may have to work your way through some disapproval. To balance this, it's important to take heed of wise counsel when it seems that everyone in your life disapproves of your relationship with someone. If everyone in your life seems to not encourage your relationship, especially when it seems these are spiritually mature people who have been married for a long time, you should take that seriously. But with that being said, when God brings someone into your life, you should also expect that not everyone will approve of your relationship. Don't forget that some people in your life may allow the devil to work through them because he knows this relationship will give God glory in your life and he doesn't want that. He will do everything within his power to discourage you from taking that path. Often, this opposition 
though not coming from everyone, may come from some of the people in your life whom you love and respect. The enemy may use their immaturity in dealing with life issues, maybe about defining people based on the amount of money they have, how they look on the outside, ethnic or racial differences, church denomination or other factors. However, as long as you keep your eyes on God and are willing to take correction and be led by the Spirit, you'll be fine. This may not be comfortable to deal with, but it will be worth it. Be patient. Trust God during the process and for His timing. Don't be in a hurry to jump in or out of any relationship until you are sure God is no longer in it.